We have our first speaker coming up, Bill Dallas from Champion the Vogue. Uh, I'm sure lots of you have heard about Champion the Vogue. Bill Dallas came all the way from California. Just wow. We are so honored. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. mentioned, uh, we're based in Silicon Valley, uh, just, uh, which is northern California. We travel all around the country uh, talking with groups like yourself, and we're excited to be here. Some numbers, 27%, uh, 220 million, uh, 220 million, 118 million, 102 million. 6 million, 4.5 million is a rough, 2.9 million, 1.6 million, 8,900, October 10th, let's see if any other numbers, oh, an interesting one is kind of a, almost 27 uh, million, which is even 27%, uh, 14 million, 13 million, video. I'm just going to show part of this one. So I'm going to show the first. When we take a look at the broad stripes and the bright stars on our American flag, we are reminded that our country has been through a perilous fight. When we take a look at the cross, we are reminded that our God sent his son to die for us all. If you're a Christian and you're an American, you find yourself doing your best to honor both the cross and the flag. On November 6, 2012, we will have the opportunity to decide who runs our United States of America. It's estimated that there are over 60 million Christians in the U.S., and only about 30 million of them vote in any given election. That tells us that roughly half of the Christians in this country do not realize the power and influence they hold in one single vote. Do we really have an influence, you say? Well, let's take a look. For example, the Show Me State of Missouri. In 2008, the voting margin between the two main candidates was a mere 3,903 votes, Want to guess how many unregistered Christians reside in Missouri? Approximately 102,522. Let's head out east to the Tar Heel state of North Carolina. Their voting margin was only 14,177 votes. Unregistered Christians there, about 281,212. So here's the deal. We've researched 21 states and have concluded that getting 5 million new registered Christians would decide an election. So, how will we get that many new people to vote? Um, you. People's... See, it really does come down to one person. It's the power of one. One person can change anything. So, when I go around the country and I look at people like yourself, you're committed to doing something. You, you love the country, you see the, the problem we're in, some would say it's the mess we're in, and you want to do something about it. I'm going to show you today that it's about numbers. And in Silicon Valley, our whole team has built all of these technology tools. And if you know anything about uh, computer science and how it's built, it's all based on ones and zeros. It all comes down to numbers. And, and, and that's what it ultimately is in the political way, too. It's numbers. So what we've done is we've put together these technologies. We're a nonprofit 501c4. We're not we're, we're nonpartisan, but we are um, we work exclusively with conservative groups. 
And what we do is we provide these tools and technologies for groups to provide them for MOPs. We provide a program which actually provide a, a way for helping through the vote. We're also helping um, CWA with um, some of our tools. And what, what I'm going to show you is some of the tools that we're working with some of these other groups. But really, it's not the tools in and of themselves are just uh, the, the means, if you would. But ultimately, the power is in the individual that's using those tools, right? I mean, a car can be incredibly powerful, but unless you get a driver that turns it on and drives it, a car really has no use. So I started putting up some numbers. You've obviously seen the 3,900. That was a difference in 2008. Uh, McCain won your state, as you all know, by 3,900. You saw it in Missouri. Uh, President Obama beat McCain by 14,000 votes. Now, we primarily work with Christian groups. We're also working with a whole bunch of Tea Party groups. Mostly our large umbrella is conservative groups with an uh, emphasis on Christian um, organizations. We work with a lot of libertarian groups, a lot of groups that, um, that may not have a direct Christian faith, but they have a conservative uh, a value base. And that's kind of how we, how we do this. So that's the 3,900. Your state, 6 million people roughly live in your state. That's what the 6 million is for. Of eligible voters over 18 uh, uh, years old, there's 4.5 million. From 2008, 2.9 million uh, showed up. So you saw that 3,900 was the number of people that did not actually, uh, was the difference of the vote. 2.9 million people voted 1.6 million people in the state of Missouri did. A good portion of them were not registered. You saw about the, the Christians that weren't, but there's a lot of other conservative, conservatives that weren't registered, and then a lot of people that just didn't show up. Our problem, and the problem is in the country, is that a minority can rule and direct the direction that we go. And so what we do at Champion the Vote, or actually the name of our, our full organization is United on Purpose, but our initiative is called Champion the Vote is go around and encourage people that we really can make a difference and change between get people to both register and show up to vote. Now obviously there's a component in here which is not as much our focus, but it is a lot of these other groups. We have to also educate people on the issues. We by nature, and I say we as people, tend to be a little bit lazy and we want quick solutions to things. And we do. And that's the problem. So we have 1.6 million in Missouri and we've got to bring that number up probably over the next 10 years. Now, we're conservative. We stand for life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Uh, we, we like limited government. We like a balanced budget. We like to spend no more than we take in and actually like to have a surplus. Our group does believe strongly in traditional marriage. We believe in pro-life. So all that said, I want to use an example. This is not to bash any group out there. I'm just going to make um, a, a case. In fact, um, when I watch what they've been able to do, you're kind of amazed at their fortitude and staying on plan. Um, the, the gay agenda, as, and again, I'm not here to bash uh, uh, gays, I'm just telling you how it is and how they um, their, their, their plan. They had a systematic plan uh, over 20 years ago, and it was called, you may, some of you may know about the book, it's almost impossible to find out, it's called After, it was after the Ball, or After the Dance. They had a systematic plan on what they needed to do to be able to take their agenda into the country. Again, not gay bashing, just giving you an example of what they did. And they identified areas that they were going to um, slowly and systematically go through to be able to get their agenda so it would become mainstream. Many of the areas you know about, and the political arena was one. Media, and thus you know the, the TV shows and how it's all accepted. It becomes the norm. Now why I'm using a gay um, uh, analogy is because it's a minority of the people in our country. The gays would say they're the minority of people. There are less gays than there are people that are but yet they have the much more say now in how the agenda is made on TV, on the shows. You, uh, there's a new show out that's called The New Normal. You know about the modern family, you know all these shows. And it started even back at Will and Grace when all of a sudden the normal people were the people that were of the homosexual um, lifestyle. Again, not putting down um, a gay person, I'm just saying what their systematic approach was. They also were going to make sure they got involved in the healthcare system, that was one of the other areas. 
and in schools. Because I knew that obviously where are the people being educated, so they started becoming teachers and got on uh, school boards. And it was a systematic plan. I would argue that conservatives tend less to be about long-term plans. We try to be about short-term means, and that sometimes is um, to our fault. I'm hoping to have a group of people here that are actually committed to spending a Saturday, you know, in the summer, other than getting out of the heat, unless your house is an air condition, you're here because you care and you're concerned about the country. So what I would say is, let's start talking about what a long-term plan can be and how you can affect that. So let's talk about the last 30 or 40 years. I'm 50 years old. The first time I ever voted, I was 18 years old in 1980. Who did I vote for? Reagan. Reagan would be considered probably, you know, kind of the poster child as one of the true conservative presidents. Maybe one of the greatest yeah. presidents in the modern era. And of all the good things he did, there was obviously a major problem. Let me tell you the major problem. He only got 27% of adults to vote for him. 27% of adults voted for him. I did not say 27% of the voters voted for him, 27% of the adults voted for him. I don't know what the exact number then was, say 200 million people, 27%. For Carter, it was probably 24, 25%, so 52% voted, 48% stayed home, and he got 27% of the vote. Now, just to give you some numbers, President Obama, and uh, because um, he, they were able to actually get more out, uh, they, he got 31% of all the adults to vote. So again, so you understand, 31% of the adults, because there's a percentage of adults that never voted in a given election. So in 2000, I'll come back to this number in a second. So in 2008, we have 220 million adults. We have about 300 million people in the country, many of them are children. We have 220 million adults, 2008, that actually voted was 118 million. President Obama got about 69 million. These are estimates, I mean, I'm just rounding. And uh, 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 Senator McCain got 60 million, so roughly about 180 million. But 102 million people don't didn't show up either. They weren't registered or didn't show up. So you always get a minority. And obviously, you all know at the primary level, it's even worse. Or if it's an election in, a, in, a, in, in the um, you know in the off years or you know in the midterms, it's even less than that. So therefore, a minority will always determine who it is. So what would it look like if we had more people engaged? So you're saying, okay, but that just hasn't happened for a long time. And yes, because we don't have a long-term plan how to get there. That's not how we operate. We get our guy in, and let's just say our guy, again, I'm not partisan, but I personally, who I vote for, I'm allowed to do that. But we get our guy in, let's say, like Reagan. That's the guy in, right? But then we go to sleep. <laughs> and we wonder what happens, because there's no question the country is in worse shape now than it was in 1984. Now, in 1980, it was in really bad shape. In 84 and 88, it's much worse now. Why? He came in. Because we get the person in, we either go to sleep, or we let the people out there take care of everything. I travel all the time. I'm on planes in and out of airports all the time. I um, work with uh, small groups, I work with large groups, I work with major organizations. A lot of the groups I work with are in DC these days. I go into the Cannon Building, um, where the um, uh, House of Representatives are housed. I go into the Russell Building, where the, uh, the U.S. Senators are housed. I'm around all of those buildings. And I'm telling you, this is a monstrous city. It's a city that's built upon itself with an industry of itself. And it's gigantic. And when I go there, and I used to go there all the time because I grew up on the East Coast, I would go to my sisters who were just out, outside of D.C., just outside of And I used to love to go there for Thanksgiving. And for Christmas. Now, when I go there, every time I go there, I just it is the hardest city for me to go into because it's big and it's it's impersonal, and you can see just the, the the jobs upon jobs all built upon a government. And and you wonder how could it ever change? How do you get rid of the EPAs? Or how do you downsize? It's all these ones that you all agree on, right? We all agree on this. And how do you break the shrink that thing down? I guarantee it with all my heart, not a short-term solution. It just won't happen. I'd say at least it's a 10-year plan at best, more like 15 or 20 years. I'm not sure in my lifetime I see ultimate reality of where we'll end up being. 
but I hopefully we'll just start seeing a change. And maybe by the time I leave this earth, I can almost sense that maybe helping to keep the ocean had actually made a difference, but it's the next generation that finally does. It's just too big. If those people are, I mean, we're going to change everything I know. What we need to do is we need to stop the bleeding, and then we need to have a systematic plan on how we go about changing it step by step. No matter what kind of government we are, we're not a democracy, we're, we're a representative form of government. We, we elect leaders who then go on to represent us. And so it needs to start at the grassroots level, both at the local elected officials and move them up at the primary level and move these people up. Now in a few minutes, I'm not just going to talk about all these things, I'm going to show you some of the ways that I believe we can get there. But just so you understand, if we think it's a short-term fix at the 2012 election, whether it's the president or you've got a key senator of a senatorial race, that was only a step in the ultimate process. And if you don't have that mindset, the conservative rich, we will lose. We will always be behind. Whereas the other agenda, so look what's happened again in the mainstream media. The mainstream media is owned by uh, secular progressives. It's owned by certain agendas. But it just didn't happen overnight. right? How do you boil a frog? You boil it slowly. And if we had that same mindset, and we, we didn't have the fast food mentality and the, you know, everything's got to happen quickly, which is both sides, but they just tend to be a little bit smarter. And they can also be a little more angrier. And I'm not talking Democrat or Republican. I'm certainly ta I'm talking more liberal, um, secular, progressive than I am anything else. Because think about this, how we have to move so quickly. I mean, I'm, I travel again all the time on planes. And I'm in lines, right? Sometimes you get the security lines, and you have to determine which one you're going to go through to go there. And I'll have two hours to get through that. I got plenty of time. I can go have a cup of coffee on the other side, right? So I got plenty of time. But I get in that line on the which line, and all of a sudden this line, and I'm here, and that line's not moving. That line starts moving faster. I get angry, even though I got plenty of time. It's going to. I mean, I'm, I'm sure none of you do that in the grocery, right? <laughs> right? And then I judge. That guy, I'm going to see. It. Does he get through before me? And I judge him. You know, we do the same thing because we just move things quickly. We have to have a systematic approach. Okay, so here's the, we get the 220 million, or 18 million, the 102 million. Talk about the 27% of how many people, um, ballots, voted for regular ballots <coughs> in 1980. Um, this is the 1.6, I'm going to keep this up. That's your unregistered, or that's your non voting people in Missouri in 2008. And then a little tidbit. Your state, I would say, on a long term basis, is an easier one than my state. I'm a resident of California. <laughs> Look at these numbers. Staggering. Remember what Missouri was, right? 4.5 of, of adults. You were 6 million first people in your, in your state. You had uh, 2.9 roughly that voted. 1.6 did. California adults. 27 million adults. Obviously, we're the largest state population-wise. 27 million adults. 14 and 13, guess what? 14 million people did not vote. Think about this. We are a state that had more, more people not vote than voted. So 13 million people voted in 2008. 14 million people did not. President Obama got 8 million. Senator McCain got five. The difference was three million. Three million was the difference. Fourteen million people sat home. Now, I'm not saying that if everybody had gone to the polls, right, because we're saying that all of a sudden, you know, they would have all been conservative. But the approach is how do you start getting more conservatives to the polls to even make a difference like California? We are, we are a very difficult state because of our um, public um, employee pension plans and just the way the state is. I mean, we have states, we have cities now going bankrupt, as you know, we've had three and they recently reported and, and more, more to come. I just want to throw that out to you. So, last thing, we'll talk about how we get there. October 10th, that's a critical date for the state of Missouri. That is the date when you need to be registered by if you're going to vote in 2012. So we need to talk about how we're going to get people there. Ultimately, I believe it's the people sitting in this room and the influence you have with others. I truly believe in the power of one. The champion program that we've developed and all the tools that we've built, some that I'm going to show you today, some that are coming out in uh, the next month, we believe will have a difference. We also believe that um, some of the tools that uh, political gravity have, that some of the things that true the voter doing, 
uh, things that CWA are doing, they're all part of, of providing us, um, solutions and tools to make it. But it's going to be all of us making it, and you choose whatever ones work for you. Again, we're not partisan. We don't partisan anything. We don't care. We just want you to get in the game and then influence others to get in the game. And I'm going to continually keep going back over the next few minutes to the power of one. See, the one individual really can make a difference, right? We all love in our country, you know, we talk about the underdog, right? Or we talk the rags to riches story. I really believe what it is, it's the ordinary people doing extraordinary things. That's when we sit back and go, wow. It could be somebody that is a business owner that starts a business, works harder, that makes it while it's at least successful. We, we applaud them. It could be like the... Um, uh, uh, Jamie uh, Escalante, you saw the movie Stand in the Liver, um, I'm going to uh, uh, know about it, in 1988 the movie came out, about um, an engineer that decides to go teach at the East L.A. schools, at East L.A. is some of the worst um, area in, in the entire country, it's, um, it's bigger and, and more worse than like, places like East a. St. Louis, and he goes in there and he decides to teach um, primarily minority students or, or low income, maybe is a better way to say it, and he teaches them a calculus when all the other teachers in the community believe, you've seen the movie where they believe they, he can't uh, teach these students, they won't do it. So he has them come in on Saturdays at 9 o'clock and stays all day, and he comes in early on school days and stays late, and, he, and they, they have these incredible AP scores, and as you know, this, the movie, which is, is based on a true story, um, they actually, the, the, the board uh, the, the, uh, that runs the SATs and the APs say there's no way that this many students can find it in their answers that they got wrong or too consistent. And so they throw them all out. And then they redo them again and they all pass again. It's an amazing story. If you ever get a chance to rent it, it's called State of the Liver. But the point is that it shows the power of one person can make um, a difference. And so we see an ordinary, extraordinary is why we get amazed. We see it even in sports. The quarterback, you know, that probably in the last 20 years were most amazed is not the Tom Brady's, right? And it's not the, um, you know, Dan Marino's or the Drew Brees who just done $100 million. It's the guys like, I forget that guy. He was like, Kurt uh, Warner. He was right. He was a <laughs> worked at the grocery store. That's exactly right. Exactly. He stole my punchline. He works at a grocery store stocking. And then all of a sudden he gets called, right? And through a series of injuries, he gets put out there and ends up winning. A Super Bowl and it ends up and we pay. And that ends up going to another Super Bowl, not with their team, but that's exactly right. And we get amazed at not just by their success, but about where they started from, because it's what an ordinary person can be extraordinary. I mean, it's biblical, right? We obviously know about the Josephs, uh, or the Joshua's, and the Caleb's, when everybody else is scared to go in and try to take the territory because they see the giants, they say, no, we can do it. We can do it. Or if any of you um, are of the Christian, of uh, faith and have taught any of your children or grandchildren stories, what's one of the most famous stories you always tell them? You always tell the story about David and God. That's what the movies we get inspired by, because I really believe one person can. And so you're going to hear all the reasons why we can't, and it's always, I know, it's always going to be a large portion of 40 to 50 percent will never vote in any given election. In midterms, it'll be worse. In the primaries, they're just, it's astronomical, the numbers, that 10 percent can determine who your candidate is. Well, that ultimately is what this is about. The long-term play over the next 10 years, uh, you know, cut to the chase. Getting more people um, into the electoral process to vote, getting them educated, and then getting people at the primary level to say, no, the real people who have your back, if you'll get in, they will vote for you. If you truly stand for the guys, we've got your back. And the minute you get to DC or you get to Jefferson City or wherever that elected official you elect them, and the minute that you decide that you don't want to stick with those values of, of why we voted for you, and guess what? We won't have your back. And we will vote somebody else. And we will vote in large blocks. And you have that systematic plan on how you do it over the next 10 years. And that's what we need to do. Because we are a majority. We really are. I mean, I love the um, Lifeway poll. Lifeway is the um, publishing arm for Southern Baptist. They did a poll on um, a Merry Christmas. In fact, when I took this job a couple years ago, I was starting as a consultant. I'm not sure I was going to do it full time. It was almost two years ago. And um, then I actually started as a consultant. It was in October of 2010. I said, I'll do it full time. I wanted to share, you know, being, getting people getting registered, a long term plan for 10 years. I mean, talk about the, I thought at that time, the most unsexy job you could possibly do. <laughs> right? Going around the country getting people registered. 
And I heard a poll that had come out, and they had done it on uh, Merry Christmas, and they asked a thousand people, would you like to hear people say Merry Christmas at Christmas time? Eight percent said no, we don't want to hear that. And I respect that, right? I mean, they could be atheists, they could be agnostic, they just don't want to hear it. They could be of Jewish uh, faith, that they don't want to hear that. They're not going to oppose on us, but they don't want to hear that. I can respect that. Eight percent. Thirty-one percent don't really care either way. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And 61% said they want to hear the words Merry Christmas. And that's why I have a problem with 61% want to hear Merry Christmas in our country. Yet what do we do? We immediately bow down to the 8% because we don't want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. And again, not bashing the case. They are a minority and they ultimately then dictate what uh, the agenda will be. There is a German uh, uh, psychologist, um, that wrote about a phenomenon called the spiral of silence. Uh, this was after um, World War II, and she watched what happened in the Nazi regime. And what she saw was that where, the way it started in the mid-90s, in the mid-30s, uh, uh, 1930s, to where it ultimately came into the early 1940s, was as the Nazi regime was taking over, they were a minority, if you looked at the, if you understood Germany at the time, they were a minority, but they slowly were able to get their messaging out. And that minor, and the minority started to kind of basically give the message, and everybody started to go, huh, they can their head. And even though some people, which turns out to be a lot more, didn't really like where it was going, they were afraid to say anything, and they stayed silent. And so the small minority started getting louder, and the large majority started getting quieter, and it was called the spiral of silence. She, she, she coined that phrase. But the spiral of silence is, is the more silent you remain, the minority gets louder and gets more control, the majority gets even quieter, and then finally when some of the majority wants to step up, the rest of the majority steps back, and that minority pounces on the person that tried to step up instead of going out and saying, we are the majority. And it's called the spiral of silence. And like a, a tide pool, it goes down and down and down. What we've got to do, ladies and gentlemen, is step forward and say, let's go ahead and let's make our inroads step by step, and we can change this um, and all. And then lastly, I'm going to show you a couple things. Um, it's hard, right, because we're about to be in the most, probably one of the most uh, nasty uh, 90 days you can, you can imagine. Actually, it's 114 days until November 6th, and it's going to get nasty. And what it's going to do, the amount of money that's going to be spent, you remember until a billion dollars here, half a billion dollars here, regardless, there'll be more money spent on this present election between President Obama, right, and, and, and uh, Governor Romney than ever has been in the history of our country. And a good portion of that is going to end up in media, meet on the internet or meeting on TV. And they're just going to be bashing each other. And the problem is, you know, political ads, and this is on both sides, right? They're sometimes half truths, so they're sound points, so it looks good, they're trying to get emotional. And what that does is you're convinced, if you're conservative, you're going to go conservative, you're, and you're liberal, you're going to go liberal, but it's all those independents in, in, in the between, or more importantly, it's those people, the 1.6 million in Missouri, that aren't, didn't vote last time, or aren't registered, and they're hearing all this noise out there, and you know what the first thing is? <gasps> Forget about it. It's not, is Romney a, uh, is Romney a Mormon or not? It's not, well, Obama, you know, he, he looks cooler than Romney. It's not all that. It's just the anger, and so they regress. Because you look at the top nine reasons why people don't vote. And I'll give you a bunch of them, right? Um, one is, uh, it's apathy. I don't care. Um, number above that, actually, is my vote doesn't make a difference. Well, my vote doesn't make a difference, and my vote doesn't make a difference, my vote doesn't make a difference. And in California, all of that um, totaled up to 14 million people. Guess what? The majority of people, we don't make a difference. We don't, if we had voted in one block, we could have determined anything in our state. Right? Another reason is I don't understand. How do I get all the education? Where do I find? How do I determine between the candidates? Another one is people move. I'm going to show you this in a minute, but the 14% of all Americans who believe they're registered are not. Let me state that again. 14% of all Americans who believe they're registered are not. How can that be? Because one of the reasons is we move. That's the number one reason we move. And we move by a county, and now all of a sudden we're not registered. Um, 
And so that's uh, one thing that people don't realize. Another reason is um, why 14% of people either registered or not. They haven't voted in such a long time, they get taken off the rolls in some states because they think you're dead. Except Illinois, where it's actually, if you die, your vote keeps going long after you're left this earth, right? That's what they say. Um, other reason uh, why is, uh, for a lot of Christians, is eschatology, right? Because we just, we believe that, you know, God's going to take care of everything. We're going to have a Sunday. But obviously God wants us to be responsible for the world on earth. So, what do we do? I'm going to show you some of the tools we've developed that we'd like to provide for you. What you just said about um, what you just said about people thinking that um, God can take care of everything. There's an expression I learned. It's called. It says, "God moves mountains, bring a shovel." <laughs> <laughs> And that's exactly what we have to do. That's exactly right. Can I ask a question? What is your background before you came? On November 6, 2012, we will have the opportunity to decide who leads our United States of America. It's estimated that there are over 60 million Christians in the U.S., and only about 30 million of them vote in any given election. <coughs> that tells us that roughly half of the Christians in this country don't even realize the power and influence they hold in one single vote. In the midst of an election year, we understand that your organization has its own set of goals and objectives to achieve. But at the same time, you know that getting your constituents to register and vote is one of the most effective ways to further your cause because we understand that the future of America hangs in the balance, we've created some online tools that you can easily embed into your website to promote voter registration. With our online voter registration tool, your constituents can register to vote right on your website. Our voter lookup tool lets you find out if people you know are registered or not. Register One is a campaign tool for every registered Christian to get just one unregistered Christian registered to vote. Our voter registration drive kit has everything you need to host a voter registration drive at your ministry or church. Plus, we have tools that will help you mobilize volunteers in your community to call and visit unregistered Christians in their own neighborhoods. And we make it very easy for you to upload the tools you want to use. We're convinced that Christian voters can change the future of our nation on election day. With the right tools, plus faith and determination, we believe that together we can make a difference. Download your tools today at www.championthevote.com. I mentioned my background a minute, but before I do, uh, so th th what we've done is we've provided all of these tools, and they're all um, online at Champion the Vote. Uh, and I'm going to go through a couple of these tools. They're all free. Feel free to use them. Um, if you have a website or organization, feel free. But what we've also done is we've partnered uh, with MOPS, um, with Judy and, and Frida. And, and you can actually find the tools there. Next week, their site will go live. And you'll see a lot of these tools. They've chosen to take a lot of these tools and put on their site. So I said, well, which site should we go to? Well, we always would prefer you work with a local group. Um, CWA has some of the tools too. Work with whatever group you feel most comfortable with. Again, it's mobilizing the volunteers. And if those tools work better, like with the campaign that um, CWA is doing, the She Votes 2012, use the tools there. W whatever constituency is best for you. <coughs> if if Ross is the one to work with, great. If you have some other organizations who want to use our tools, we'll embed them in the tools. And so what are some of the tools? One is we have a tool there for every single state. Missouri is obviously one of them where you can actually uh, click on Missouri, you type your uh, name in, and a form will come up, you can fill out the form, you print it up, you mail it in, and it shows you exactly where to mail it in Jefferson City, you mail it in, and we can track all the way up to the mail whether or not that um, what went in uh, was, was downloaded. And then we go and we run our database against uh, the uh, Missouri database when the next time uh, Missouri is updated, we can see if they're registered, if people actually submitted the form. If they did not, we then get back to organization. You should ping these people because they must have forgotten to put in the mail or it never got there. So we help that process through, um, and that's all there. We call that register vote. You can go to registervote.org or go to champion the vote. 
or go to uh, MOPS, it does, wherever it is, to find out to get uh, people registered. That's one. Uh, number two tool is, which is probably the most successful tool right now, um, this tool is featured on Glenn Beck um, back uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, over 400,000 people did the uh, voter lookup. And as, you met, as I mentioned to you, that 14% of all Americans believe they're registered, but they're not. So we developed a tool that we tie into every single state database, and you can put your name in and see if you're registered or not. And some of the people, it's amazing that they'll go in there and go, I thought I was registered. Oh, that's right, I moved from about four months ago and I forgot to register again. And you just go, it's, it's called register, uh, are you registered? I'm sorry, are you registered? Org. That's the actual tool. By the way, every tool I mentioned is on Champion the Vote. Every tool. That video you just saw is all there on the Excuse Champion the Vote. Wallbuilders.com. That's right, because Wall Builders has our tool on it. Yeah. Right. And so that and you can go on and I found out it's registered to vote in three different places. Right. And that and so what she said is this is important, right? <laughs> so that tool is embedded on the Wall Builders site, which is wallbuilders.com slash vote. And David Barton, who says you know the story, David's actually on our board. Um, we put it on his site and Glenn uh, drove him there. That same tool is going to be on Judy's site, it's on Shiva. So whatever group you want to go to find that tool, go to the best group. Or if you want to put it on your own website, if you have a website, you can go to Champion the Vote and you can upload it. The point is the power of that You group. don't have to put it on your website and wall builders. All you have to do is go in and type in your group's name and city and then you pull up. No, no, what I'm saying is, no, that is correct. That's where the tool is. But some people, that tool, right, it's what's called yeah. a widget. You can take it, and if you want to embed it, if you had your own personal website or your Facebook page, you can take it and put it there and then get it out to friends. Because I'd like to talk about the power. Or you can just tell people to do the wall builders, or wherever you want to do it. But here's how it works. Let me explain how the tool works. The tool works, and without pulling up here, is you just, you go to, you, it's a little tool, and you put your name in. You put your name in, you put your state, you put your city or zip code. That's it. You don't even put your address. And it will pop up, and it will tell you, and if you come in red, um, and, if, and if somebody wants to go ahead and pull it up as we're talking, I, I can actually show it to you. Let's pull you in, and I'll show you how it is. Let, let's see if we can. Oh, you can't get it to work again? I did. All right, hold on a second. There it is. There it is. I need to get it. I need to change this. It doesn't like it. Hi, John. 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 So here it is. This video, by the way, is a video that we have out of the website that actually explains this campaign. I did not show this to you on right now. You go to the website, rdregistered.org, and you can watch the video. It's just about the amount of people that believe they're registered and aren't. The reasons why they're not registered is because they don't play. You can watch this video for 90 seconds. Here's the actual tool. So you go into this, and let's go ahead. And your first name is? D-I-A-N-A. D-I-A-N-A. N A Diana. Okay, and your last name? Kaufman with a K K A U K A U F U F M A N M A N. And your city? St. Peters. S T. S T. Period. Yes. Peters. Peters. P E T E R S. State. Missouri. <laughs> I agree, you have to click the I agree, and so we'll search and see if she shows up. So it says you are not registered. I'm registered. Okay, put mine in and see if they take but, it out to say But, 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 why not? Yeah. There she is. Yeah. She's yeah. 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 I may be able to explain that. Um, Actually, she was there when she was in Georgia. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
help, help me out, um, House with your Young Guns, um, House, uh, uh, I think it was McCuller, Mc, Mc, McCrary, came to our office, right? <laughs> So he had an already went. So anyway, he, he came in and he types his name in there and he shows that he's not in there, right? And the reason is because the state of California, even though it's in like McCullough or McCullough, okay, so it's M, lower C, capital C, in the state of California, they entered in. Remember, this is the state. They put a, no, they put a space in. So, and I'm not going to do that. But if you go to this tool, right, and go to wall builders, it actually has the tips. So it tells you like tips. If you're married, did you? Did, it tells you should check your name. Name, maybe we're best. Like my wife, her last name is Dallas, but she still has on some of her information, like on her driver's license, even though we've been married 14 years, she has her maiden name, right? She just never transferred it over, so her maiden name appears. So we tell you all the tips and tools, but then it'll tell you where, because what this tool is basically doing, it tied into the state database, so it's just matching the state database. Let, let me explain why, where the power is. The power is not whether you woke up or not. Like if Glenn Beck, they were driving over to Wall Builders, which is a great site, wallbuilders.com slash vote, um, if you ever want to check it out. At one point, um, uh, Glenn's audience was doing 100 searches per second. 100 searches per second, everybody's looking up there. The power is not that you find if you're registered. The power is that you can find if friends or relatives are registered that you know are conservative. Because then, this is the power is, let's say, okay, Diana is, but this Diana is not, right? And so what you do is, you can then click an email, and you can set up an email to them, right? And you click in, and it gives you an email. This is actually the most important. I'm hoping that, that it's you, and it tells you it's, it's a little email. To them. But you can edit the email, too, if you want. Right? And now you can send the email to your friends. This is the power. So remember I talked about the power of one? Your state is going to be a close state again, everyone. And I'm not even going to get nonpartisan. It's a close state. Just in this room, if you got the word out to others, and let's just use 2008, right? <coughs> that 3,900 is different. You all could get the word out to get the word out to get the word out. Remember the commercial, right? You know, it's the shampoo commercial. It was a red one or something like that. Tell, they'll tell two friends. I'm dating myself, right? Don't worry, so. Right? <laughs> right, right? You'll tell two friends or tell two friends. If you got the word out to people and send out these emails, and then what you do is you print the form, you give them the form that you can actually attach the form, right? And then you'll attach the form, so when you say they're not registered, you're actually sending the form. And here's a cool thing. It's down a little bit. Look, now look at this form. This is the form, but let me show you the cool thing. What does it say right down here? Jefferson City. Jefferson City, because when we did the search, I was searching somebody from Missouri. Our program knows that this person's from Missouri. So if you decide that, hey, you know what? We also know that Florida is going to be a close state. By the way, Florida, 14 million residents. The difference in 2008 was 240,000. Just of Christians that weren't registered, 660,000. Think about this. Florida, very important to say, 660,000 people. Christians, that's not including libertarians that aren't Christians, 660,000 not registered, not registered. Forget about any people that were registered to vote. The difference in 2008 in Florida is 240,000. So you know people in Florida, so you can send it. But the cool thing about this tool, is again, it, it's hard to see if you're not in the back, is it comes with, so if you found somebody in Florida and you email them, I see you're not registered, your sister in Florida, somebody you went to school with, somebody that you know you, you know is starchly conservative, you can go ahead and um, send it to them. And when the email goes out because you looked them up from Florida, it would then say Tallahassee. That's the capital of Florida. Right? If it was Ohio, you'd be fine there. Same thing. In California, it'd be Sacramento. So you're given the form, and then all you have they have to do is fill it out, download it, mail it, and now they're registered. That's how easy this is. That's what I'm saying. Just the power of the people in this room can make a difference. Now, there's some other tools as well as the MOPS, and those are people that really want to be able to put a little more time and effort in. We have, and there's in your packet, there's this page here. What this page is, it talks about the MOP voter initiative. We've already talked about the voter lookup tool, but also if you want to um, find lists in Missouri, 
that um, of non-registered uh, conservatives, there are phone numbers you can call, uh, there are door-to-door -door scripts, and you can look up email and you can get the word out. It's now, not in our package. It's like this. It's on the right side. Looks like this. Okay. Okay. And, but now this is the website, basically this is the website. And this is going to be um, up next week, and this is up. And what, what it will be is, you can go there, you can find all of these tools. You can also find some of these exact same tools at, uh, at CWA, She Votes uh, 2012, and they have tools there that you can use there. Whatever group you feel most comfortable associating with, please do. Now, the difference between this tool and the RE registered is this one you could be calling or emailing people you don't really know. And that's still fine, right? That's canvassing, canvassing, knocking on doors, or making phone calls, all great stuff for email. The nice thing about the RE registered is you're doing it to people that you probably know and you have an affinity to. By the way, the way this tool was developed, it was one of the people in our office uh, that we're actually friends with, and we contacted a conservative author, you would know the name, over 40 books written goes around the country speaking about conservative values, traditional marriage, leadership. And we looked up the name, and this particular person, I will not repeat it, was not registered. And remember, we, when we, our tool is not developed because we had this big database, but the tool was not developed at that point. We had a database that said, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right that they're not registered. So we go ahead, and I pick up the phone, and I call this individual, and I say, how can you not be registered? Do you vote? The of course I voted. I voted last night for Kim Kardashian and I voted for the stars. And he says, I said, seriously, you no, I don't. Why not? One, my vote doesn't matter. Two, I'm too busy. And the third one is, I'm afraid that if I get registered, that there's a greater chance I'm going to call for jury duty, which doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with whether or not you have a driver's license. But. So there are so many conservatives out there that you just get on that are friends of yours, and you send them an email, you modify the email I showed you a minute ago, and you just send them a form. They will go ahead and do it if you state the case. So let me finish up a couple last what things. What did you say about uh, uh, jury duty? It's not true. There's 10 other ways they get you now. Yes, yeah, because <laughs> I've heard that. There is. There's 10 other ways they get you now. Let me give you a little, little, little background. Somebody uh, Diana asked what, what I did. For the last 12 years prior to this, I ran an organization called the Church Education Network. We did satellite training and events all across the country. What was it like Matt, John Maxwell and Beth Moore and Lee Strobel and um, Lifeway, Southern Baptist, Little Creek, and Rick Warren, Saddleback. And we would broadcast in via satellite training for those churches. So I got to understand the faith community and churches, and that's why I was pegged by this group of people to come help and consult with them. And I will admit, I was not registered to vote. The last time I voted was 1980. One and only time. That's exactly right. And a couple reasons why. One is because I really didn't believe that a vote really mattered. So when they asked me to do this, I really wasn't interested in doing it. But I had, I, I was in between jobs, and I had a mortgage. And, and so I said, sure, I'll consult for a while, while I was looking for my next job. And then the Lifeway report came out to survey, and I said, you know what? Somebody, got to, you know, we, we got to, we got to all, you know, jump in this together, and we've all got to make a difference, right? Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it best, right? You know, for, and I'm paraphrasing, but for evil to prevail, all it takes is for good people to do nothing, right? And some of his better, even, even some of the other great quotes of his, is, is not to speak, is to speak, not to act, is to act. I said, you know what, I gotta do this. And just for whatever reason, I feel compelled that I've gotta do this. But about jury duty, for the last 18 years or whatever, I can totally get called on jury duty, even though I wasn't registered to vote. And by the way, I'm now registered because I used our tool. And within two weeks, I got my little, in our state, it's, um, it's like a little it's off yellow card. And I got a voter registration. And in my primary, I decided to vote. And in re reality, and we had some propositions and all, but other than that, going to, for the primary really didn't matter, right? I mean, the primary, because we, we voted, was it? Wrong, wrong. No, 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 no. For us, it didn't, because here's the reason is, I'm just saying why. 
because by that time, where our primary was, we were, it was already in June. And when I say it didn't matter, it wasn't going to influence the primary, right? Because by that time, it was, it, Romney had already gotten enough votes at all. And, but I wanted, because um, we, were, we were way out. We were You're talking about the presidential level. At the state right. level, it's great. Right, but we didn't have, the way we are, where we are in our, our state, there weren't a lot of them, right? But my point is, it didn't matter, because I was going to go vote. Because the minute you start getting that mindset, well, I'm not going to vote, it really doesn't matter, then you don't look at everything else that's on the ballot. So I did go in there, my wife and I went in there. She's always registered, she's always voted, and I cast my vote. But the point, and I'm using our tool, by the way, but again, that, that's what I'm doing. So let me finish up with a couple last things. Um, the, these tools you can find, again, all these groups you have tools. I would just encourage you to use whatever tools that are that are best fit your personality, your mindset. I would encourage you to get others out there to get involved in the process. I believe the RE registry is the simplest, right? It's just a simple way, and it's been wildly successful for wall builders and with Glenn Beck's um, initiative. But again, it's because individuals contact individuals, right? It's one person contacting somebody else. It's the power of one. Really, that's what it's supposed to be. And think about this, right? One of Reagan's best quotes. There's nothing wrong with America that what? Americans can't fix. And if we all decided to systematically start taking down the people and taking down the unregistered and moving over the register side one by one, not just 2012 or 2013, because it'll be, you know, they'll be off your elections to in place in 2014, and helping another state, certainly focus on Missouri. But if you know some relatives in other states, send them, check the RU register, get them going, get them to put the tool, embed it on their Facebook page, get everybody talking about getting people registered. And, um, in my old business, and when I was working with young, uh, Family Life, we were doing a marriage program and I'm broadcasting it, and Family Life taught us a lesson, um, which some say it's even more than that, but it's called the five touch approach. You probably know that, right? You have to be top touched five different ways before you finally make a decision. If you run out of toilet paper, you go buy toilet paper. <laughs> but it's something you really aren't normally doing, you know? It's not like most of these people are contacted and registering that, you know, they haven't registered for 30 years, like me. And somebody contacts me, you know, you can register. I don't go, I didn't know you could register in the United States of America. No, I just didn't do it. I don't think it's important. But if all of a sudden I hear it from my sister, and I get something in the mail, and I get a phone call, and I say, you know what? And then eventually make it easy for me, which our tools do. And I say, you know what? Maybe I'll register. Then I see how important it is. Then finally, and the last thing I'll say, and you can go to the website so you can use any of these tools and we'll hear more about them today. Um, because I really do believe in the power of one, I believe that ordinary people can do extraordinary things and gather together and look what happened, you know, a smaller group of people kicked out the strongest you know, army in the world, you know, 200 plus years ago. And that's how we first, that's how we started, that's how we were founded, right? Odds were always against them, us as Americans, we bound together and we can make, we can do it. So the final story I'll tell you, um, a lot of times I was, I was going, I was tired, of, you know, I can like tell you, these airports in and out. I was on this, um, one of these last legs to get home. I live in Northern California, but the way the plane got diverted or missed my flight, I had to fly to end up in LA. If you ever been to LAX, of all the airports you fly to, it's the, uh, I'm talking about, I'll go through there. And I mean, I think that's the entryway into, uh, into hell, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so and I go in LA a lot, right? This close. And so I'm kind of at LAX, and I'm tired, it's 10 o'clock at night. Get up, and um, I'm towards the front of, of, of getting ready to go into the, um, you know, the, to the board the plane. They're taking off all of the people from the previous plane. It was delayed by a little bit, and I'm there. I'm just leaning back against the wall, waiting for them to plane everybody so we can get on. I'm kind of towards the front of the line, and I'm just watching people come on. And I just had this, I had this thought, and, 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 and I want to share with you. I started thinking to myself, these people look like America. Or young, old, black, and white, Asian, and Hispanic, and some had tattoos and long hair, some had short hair, some had ties, you know, some had hoodies on, right? But it, it just it felt like America. And I, for some reason, I just started looking at this. I thought, you know, this is kind of represents America. And then the last person that got off the plane, it was this, it was this, um, this young woman, maybe 22, and she's carrying, and she's pushing her baby. She was last one off, maybe she had to get the carriage there. And I remember walking off the road, and I looked at that baby there, and I said, maybe this is why I'm doing this. Maybe this is why we're all doing this. Talk about the long, the, the long tail, the long-term approach of this thing. That if we stay at this, 
and the conservatives stay in the game, and they start convincing other people to get in the game step by step, and we start inch by inch making a difference. That someday that little girl, who is you know maybe weeks old or six months old, will someday be 18 or 20 years old. Some of us may or may not still be on CERT. Others of us will be much older and have great grandchildren. But what we'll do, what that little girl will be, will be 18 or 19. And you know what the country will be? She'll pick up a book, and the book will be about 2012. And you say, what, they killed little babies back then? And the government funded it? And, and we had this, this debt, this, all this money, and we spent more than we took in? What? And, and what, they didn't allow teachers if if still inclined to pray? And Bibles weren't allowed in schools back then? Ten Commandments weren't allowed to be in public buildings? What kind of country was that? She won't remember any of our names. She won't even notice. But it'll be because of you all, all of you, that that will become reality in her life. We stay at this. And we stay at the game. Because I believe that the ordinary person, we can do extraordinary things.